Good morning, dear Good one. Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us this Sunday morning. Sorry for the brief delay. Good morning, Harry and Sally. And Hi, Dick and Doris. Hi, Brenda. Hi, Cindy. Hello, Dick Sipley. For everybody. Hello, Edmond. Thank you so much for calling in to listen. Don and Betty Ann. Bob and Ellen Becker. John and Suzanne. Good to have you here with us. Tess and Bob. Hi, Kay. Good morning, Mom and Dad. Hello, Gabby's Mom and Dad. Hello, Joe. Hi, Gail. John and Suzanne. Hi, Joyce. Hi, Ed and Jackie. Good morning, George and Jean. Good morning, JR. Good morning, Karen. And John, good morning. Katie and Morgan and Chris and John and Lathea and Lisa. Hi, Lou. Faust. Mark Ford, good morning. And um, hi, Lynn and Mike. Susan, good morning, and Susie. And Hello, good morning, Marlo. Good morning, Bonnie. Good morning, Penny and Paul. And Nancy, good morning. It's so good to have you all here. We are up to 78 people with. Worship this morning, three churches. Hi, Sue Monarchy, Sharon Alaband. So good. Good morning, Susie James. Hello, Morris and Bonnie. Ted and Marilyn. It's good to see everybody. We're so glad that you are here in worship with us this day. We're glad to see all of you and look forward to worshiping um, three churches in one today as this collaboration continues. So um, good morning to everybody. Our call to worship um, comes this morning from um, Katie and Marin Harris. Morgan was gone, so three-year-old Marin helped out. So Gabby, if you want to stop sharing, I'll play the call to worship. Give me a second. All right. Come see. The light of God has come into the world to proclaim God's justice and love. It has overcome the darkness and brought new life. Come with all. Christ our companion has redeemed our world. He draws us into a loving family from every tribe and family and culture. Go to the Spirit has equipped us for service, to love our neighbors as we do ourselves, and to bring God's salvation to the ends of the earth. Come see, come with all, go to. In God's love, the nations of the earth will put their hope. Anytime we can get one of the adorable kids from any of the, these three churches to say something, it's like the best. Yeah, that was really, really cute. Thank you, Katie and Marin, for doing that. Thank you. That was adorable and worshipful. Oops. I probably should have shared this. We didn't plan this very well, Gabby. I should have done the first part since they're coming from my screen. So, so we have our... Beautiful prelude this morning, um, offered by um, Bethany by Bethany Presbyterian Church. It's the rock version of the Lord's Prayer. Oh, 
Thank you so Thank much. Thank you, Jean. That was great. Thank you, Jean. Friends, please listen to this call to confession. We know that nothing can separate us from the love of God. Let us in freedom confess the wrong we have done. Please join me in saying this unison prayer of confession together. Lord Jesus, we come today with gladness, grief, and joy. Gladness because you left the splendor of heaven's glory to come to a dark and cold world to bring the light and warmth of your kingdom to a world so in need of your love, your peace, and your joy. Grief because you came into the world and the world did not receive you. Still today, people turn away from you. Sin still scars your creation in the hearts of your own people. Joy because you offer perfect forgiveness and full cleansing to all who acknowledge their need of you. Cleanse us, O oh Lord, that we may welcome you, certain that we are also welcomed by you. Amen. Loved ones, hear these words of assurance. God tells us, I will cleanse them from all their guilt. We are forgiven and free. Amen. This is Dear Lord and Father of Mankind, offered by Bill and Mary Lou Johnson from Unionville Presbyterian Church. lovely. Thank you so much. That was a wonderful piece that you shared with us, Bill and Mary Lou. Will you please pray with me? Prepare our hearts, O oh God, to hear your word and obey your will. 
Amen. Our first scripture lesson comes to us from um, 1 Kings, and it is read to us today by Fred Hogue from Unionville Presbyterian Church. The Old Testament reading today is from the book of 1 Kings, chapter 19, verses 11 and 12. The prophet Elijah has come to see the Lord, stating that the Israelites have rejected the Lord's covenant, broken down his altars, and put all prophets to death, except for Elijah. Beginning at verse 11, the Lord spoke. He said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Fred. Our second scripture today comes from John chapter 1 verses 1 through 5 and 9 through 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave the power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. So I am continuing our series on Let Your Life Speak or Be the Message. It's a sermon series about authentic faith. It's how Jesus changed our world, but it's not about religion. Christianity is not a religion. It's a relationship with God through Jesus. Christianity is not a bunch of words. It's the word, Jesus Christ. And the gospel is not about what we say. It's about who we are and what we do and how we are Jesus to the world around us. St. Francis said, preach the gospel at all times, and when necessary, use words. I love that because the gospel is not a sermon. It's all about getting our eyes on God and on others. That's what it's all about. Let's be the message. The word gospel literally means good news. And our New Testament passage tells us that the gospel, or the good news, is the word. It tells us that the word is Jesus. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. When Jesus ascended into heaven, he said, I am going to leave my spirit with you. If you receive me, you become a child of mine, and I will put my spirit in your life. What he means by that is that we will be his body, and he can live through us. Jesus in you is the gospel, therefore you are the gospel. That should be an aha moment for us. And that's what this series is all about, the understanding that we are the good news. Our lives 
are the gospel, the good news of Christ in us as we reflect Christ to the world. Each and every one of us has a unique life message, a unique expression of the gospel as God uses us and works through our personality and gifts and abilities and experiences. And until you discover your life message, you'll never find your voice. You'll never have clarity on why you're here. You'll have a dissatisfaction, a disequilibrium of the soul. Something will be missing. But you can discover and align your life with your message, find your voice, and come alive and understand that you are the message. So how do we go about discovering our life message and aligning our lives with it? First, listen for the divine whisper. It's ironic, but when you stop talking, you find your voice. You have to practice the ancient spiritual discipline of solitude and silence. I was listening to one of my favorite NPR programs the other day. It's called On Being. And one of the guests said that he went on a solitude retreat. He went up to the mountains and stayed at a monastery for a weekend. And it was one of those silent monasteries where the monks aren't allowed to talk. Nobody there can talk. They can't see anything. And he said for the first hour or so, he thought he was going to die. And all he could think about was that he had two more days. But then he saw, said that God began to break through. He stopped talking and just started listening. And in his silence, God began to restore his soul. And the man said it was a game changer. God began, began impressing things on his heart. So it was a powerful moment. When we finally stop talking, when we shut up, we find our voice. We start listening to God and listening to others. There was a time when the prophet Elijah needed clarity from God. He needed to hear from God to know God's will for what was next. And so in our Old Testament passage, we heard that the Lord told him to go out and stand on the mountains because the Lord's going to come by. And the wind came and it shattered the rocks, but the God was not in the wind. And then there was the earthquake and God was not in the earthquake. And then the fire, but God was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. I love that phrase of God speaking to us in a gentle whisper. The problem is we're always talking and we don't hear his gentle whisper. We're always looking for God in the big things, but so many times God is found in the small things. It speaks volumes when you listen to the hurts of others. So this week, start listening to others. Listen to the pain and the hurts of others. Instead of talking, start listening. Listen to your family. Really listen. Don't just hear it, but listen and start looking for ways that you can be the message and be the difference as you listen. That's how you hear. God's divine whisper. But then secondly, you need to recognize your sacred shout. To discover and align my life with my life message, I have to recognize that I have a sacred shout. C.S. Lewis said that God whispers to us in our pleasures, but shouts to us in our pain. It is his megaphone to rouse a deaf world. And that's true, God shouts to us in our pain, in our failures, and in our mess. That's what gets our attentions and turns us to God. But it's also what God uses in our lives. It's our pain that shouts to a hurting world that the gospel is alive and God is real. And that's why John says, the word became flesh. God takes your mess and turns it into a message. So don't run from failures and humanness. Don't run from pain and hurt because God will never waste it. He'll take it and use it so you can minister to people and be a message to people who are going through the same thing that you've gone through. They'll relate to you and they'll hear you. It's your struggle and pain that is your sacred shout that cuts through all the noise and connects you to hurting people and becomes your message. I don't believe for a minute that God causes our pain and sadness, but I believe with every fiber of my being that God can use those moments. There's a third thing. We have to listen for the divine whisper and recognize the sacred shout, but we also have to embrace a holy disturbance. You'll find your life message when you realize what really bothers you enough to move you out of your comfort zone, into your calling, and into the lives of others. I want to encourage you to embrace your holy disturbance. What breaks the heart of God should break yours also. Sir Francis Drake said, Disturb us, O Lord, when we are too pleased with ourselves, when our dreams have come true because we dream too little. 
when we arrived safely because we sailed too close to the shore. I encourage you to dream big dreams with God, not be afraid of setting your sails, heading away from the shore for unknown waters, and imagine what God can do through you, how God can use you. I love the message version of the John 1 passage. It says, the word became flesh and moved into the neighborhood. Jesus, the word became flesh and blood so he could show us what love looks like. And now we're supposed to move into our neighborhoods and show them what love looks like. Our neighborhood in this day and age is no longer just the guy next door or the person at the grocery store or at your kid's school. Our neighborhood is global with the 24 seven news cycle. We're able to get pictures and video and information instantaneously from around the world. Of course, unless we're trying to use Zoom on a Sunday morning and then the, it's not so instantaneous. But our neighborhood has become global. It's gotten bigger as the world has gotten smaller through communication. And it's easy, really easy, I find, to become so used to being aware of hearing about the poor and the powerless and the marginalized in our world that we feel kind of numbed, especially now when we're so focused on COVID-19 and staying healthy and getting kids back to school and what, what we need to do. Sometimes we feel numb, we feel like we can't do anything. It's like, wow, the world's problems are so big. There's millions of people living on $2 a day, billions of people without clean water, devastation coming after big disasters like hurricanes and mudslides and floods and earthquakes. And sometimes you feel like, what could I really do? What would my little bit of money do to help that? I can't be like Mother Teresa and move to Calcutta. And since I can't do that, well, then I'm not gonna do anything. But we can all do more than nothing. We can all do something. I can do more than nothing. And for the person that I can help, I can make a difference in that person's life. God did not say it was my job to end global poverty. But God did say very clearly that it's my job to engage and to be a change agent for justice and mercy in the world. We do that by starting just by loving the one in front of you. It may be your child or your spouse. Sometimes the people closest to us are the hardest to love, but you love the one in front of you. It may be a coworker, someone on your street that you know of who needs help, or it may be someone on the other side of the world that you're aware of that you can make a direct difference in their lives. You are God's masterpiece because you are made in God's image and you are to reflect that to the world. You are the gospel, the good news. And the gospel speaks louder than words because it, because it is the word, Jesus Christ. And countless words will be forgotten, but the word lasts for eternity. Hurtful words can harm, but the word heals. Meaningless words leave you empty, but the word fills you up. Religious words are lifeless, but the word is life-changing. And we have built our lives, our family, and our churches on the word, Jesus Christ. Hopefully with this series, Gabby and I want you to discover what your message is. It should be fun and rewarding as God begins to speak to us in his divine whisper and we are quiet enough to hear it. May it be so, amen. Thank you so much, Emily. It just strikes me that this is a time when we really need these words of encouragement. So thank you. Please join me in reading our affirmation of faith this week called by God. I believe in an innovative God who does not wait for us to find ourselves, but comes seeking the lost and calling us into a new way. I believe in Jesus of Nazareth as God's crucial initiative, that when he calls us to follow, Christ also gives us the power to become, both in creed and deed, the children of the living God. I believe in the spirit by whom Jesus still comes to us, calling us to follow him into an obedience, which is true liberty, into a humble service, which is the fruit of holy friendship. I believe in the church as the fellowship of Christ's people, called to respect and support one another through joys and tribulations as we travel the road towards the promised land of God's future. Because Christ has called me in this, I truly believe.
prayer of dedication comes from Doran Presbyterian Church. Oops. And it'll be shared by Susie James, offered by Susie James. Let me get it, sorry. Sorry, everybody. Hang on. <laughs> I thought I had it all queued up. Dedication. Gracious and holy God, accept what we offer today. Our money our faltering steps, our brokenness, our leftovers, our hope, our risking, our lives. Bless and transform all that we offer and all that we hold back, that new life may be ours to celebrate and share in Jesus' name. Amen. Dedication. Thank you, Susie. Yes, thank you, Susie. It's so wonderful to get to see people from the different churches participating in the liturgy. So thanks, Annalie, for coordinating that. And thank you for the volunteers who have been making the videos. Yeah, every week there'll be something, you know, to read or to be part of. So um, reach out to me or to Gabby and uh, we can you know, give you the, the liturgy or the prayer. And we thank all three churches for the continued generosity, for continuing to um, be the message, for being um, Christ out in the world. And so we... Um, this is our information. Thanks to all who continue to send in your tithes and offerings. Thank you. So we transition now to the prayers of the people. I know that at least one person already used the chat feature, but if you would please, um, anything that is on your heart, joys and concerns, things that have happened in the past week that you want to be lifted up to God in prayer, if you would share those by typing them in the Q&A, Annalie and I will share them as part of prayers of the people. We give thanks this morning for the joy of Lisa's granddaughter, Bella, who turned seven on Friday the 31st. Thanks be to God. Birthday to Bella. Um, Karen Wells asked for prayers for her brother, Steve, who is having a knee replacement surgery, and for her sister, Joanne, who is having cataract surgery. And both surgeries are taking place on Tuesday. Lord, hear our prayers and may they both have a swift recovery, Lord. We ask for prayers for the family and friends of Ken Dennison, who um, passed away suddenly this week. Lord, hear our prayers. Comfort those who mourn that loss. Lord, I lift up before you the family of Ron Parrott Sr. who passed away a few months ago, but yesterday his family was um, bringing his ashes um, and interning them in the Doran Cemetery, Lord. I pray for their family that they have comfort and peace during this time as they remember their loved one who has gone on before them. Lord, hear our prayers. We pray also for the Johnston family who lost their son um, suddenly, this, their 23-year-old son. Earlier this week, we pray for the Johnson family that they find comfort and peace. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, hear our prayers. We pray for Karen Markey, organist at Doe Run, um, as she is receiving face surgery this Wednesday. Um, and please, Lord, watch over her as she continues to live with um, the disease of depression. God, give her your strength. Lord, hear our prayers. Praying for Lieutenant Matt Foster on his travels to Alaska, where he'll be stationed for the next three years. Lord, we pray for Lieutenant Matt and also all um, the brave men and women who are serving. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, I lift up before you my friend Joanna's mom. Um, they found some unidentified 
cysts on her pancreas and they are concerned it might be cancer. So I lift up Joanna and the Lowenstein family and hear our prayers. Pray for our nation as we go through hurricane season and arise in cases of COVID-19 and the strife in our cities. Lord, hear our prayers. We lift up all the prayers that have been written in the chat feature and also those prayers that remain unspoken in our hearts. We lift them all up to you, Lord, praying together as Jesus taught his disciples saying, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our musical offering comes from Doe Run Presbyterian Church. I have felt the touch of God, offered by Susie James. Can't hear it, Gabby. At all? It's very, very soft. Let me try one more time, and then if it doesn't work. Do you want to email it to me and I'll play it? Sure. Okay. Stand by, folks. Just one second. Thank you all so much for your patience. It's definitely an important part of worship to be able to hear the beautiful music that you all are contributing. So we wanna make sure that it's a satisfying experience as we worship together. All right, Annalia, I'm shooting it off to you. Okay. In the meantime, folks, talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> Go Think of the people you can love that are in your space and in your place, the ones in front of you, the ones you can start with, start coming up with a plan. Here we go. You can squeeze your wife's hand, your husband's hand, pet a pet near you. Okay. Meditate on your own patience. All right, I have felt the touch of God. This is Susie James. Opening in, what? <laughs>
you so much, Susie and Chris. And thank you, Annalie, for sharing that. Beloved church family, as we come to the end of this worship, please go out and remember to offer yourself, offer the gospel and your most authentic love to those whom you interact with this coming week. May it be so. Go now recognizing that you are created in the image of the God who loves you. Love your neighbor as yourself and be the message. Amen. Thank you all so much for being here again on this beautiful July Sunday. I was going to put up the addresses again. Yeah. Thank you, Pete. Yeah. There's the addresses and the floating mesmerizing hypnotic bubbles. So those are the addresses and the phone numbers should you need to get in contact with any of the churches. Yeah, I'm not Thank sure why on mine it, the bubbles weren't moving. Just a bit oh, the bubbles are moving on mine. Well, now they're moving, but they weren't moving when I was playing the PowerPoint. I'm, I don't know why that is. <laughs> Maybe because that would have been too distracting. Maybe. So thank you all again. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Pete. It was good to quote unquote see you. Thank you. Thanks, Lil. You're welcome, Diana. The music is really good. All three churches have some really talented musicians and choir masters and choir mistresses. And I give thanks that you're all willing to um, that they're willing to share music with us every week and so it's and again if you want to be part of the service if you want to read a scripture or something please just reach out to us and let us know the, um, people i think like seeing familiar faces in this time of social distancing i think they like seeing um and it didn't get any cuter than uh Marin helping out reading the call to worship today yes we want all of the kids in the service thank you scott for letting us be a part of wilder's baptism it was magical it was really, really a great event. So congratulations to the Cheek family. Hi, Lynn and Michael. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Sharon, you have a wonderful week too. Thank you. John and Suzanne, I'm glad you were with us. Yes, and everybody that shows up, we make this worship service together because if it was just Annalie and I doing this, it wouldn't mean a whole lot, but it's because we're all showing up with our hearts and minds that it pleases God. So thank you all for being here. Yeah, thank you all for being here. So Don't Run has a coffee hour. We're going to get started in just a minute or two. So I think I'm going to bounce. It was wonderful all right. to with you all this morning. Love to everybody. Have a great day. Oh, Charlie, we'll find a way. You know what? Charlie, if you want to participate, we will find a way. You can bang pots and pans and toll the bell that way. We will figure it out. I would love to see Charlie. Hi, Lithia. It was great to see you. All right. Bye, everybody. Happy Sunday, everyone. Happy Sunday.